Biological Riley presents Stranger Things 4, a nostalgic interlude. Stranger Things is a show that looks to the past. In fact, the series drenches itself in nostalgia, all to the point that the show appears to be all style with minimal substance at first glance. That it is a vehicle for us to remember the good times of 80s childhood without the show features the abundance of products, songs, and fashion from that era, as well as narratively aping the style of Steven Spielberg films and Stephen King stories also from that era. It's a show that both introduced the teenage and young adult Gen Z audience to awesome 80s iconography like Metallica's masterpiece, Master of Puppets, all while Gen X and older millennials can use the show's 80s setting in order to finally reflect on their childhoods, because of course they remember the Nintendo Entertainment System and Ecto Cooler, because that stuff was the shit. And with that, Stranger Things is so thoroughly baked with nostalgia that it can be viewed as both Generation Z's retro fashion statement, or as Generation X's cinematic midlife crisis, though not my midlife crisis, for I am just just a millennial. I'm sort of young. At least I think I am. I'm not really that old. I'm just 32 and my knees hurt. No. I'm fine. <laughs> My time will come soon. So yeah, Stranger Things dives headfirst into 80s nostalgia. It has the brands and the fashion and the technology of that era. Hell, it even has roller rinks, places that became dated in the 2000s, which means in Iowa, where I come from, they became dated by the 2020s. And to wit, Stranger Things and nostalgia are just inseparable. In fact, a major part of the show's appeal is in how it recreates the time it was set in, all while capturing the storytelling ideas from that said aforementioned era. I e being set in suburbia and following young kids instead of adults. That's why at first glance, the show can be viewed as a loving 80s time capsule, a legal nostalgic drug so pure and innocent that even Reagan wouldn't declare a war on it that would ultimately ruin thousands of lives. And thus, Stranger Things, by pop culture reputation and osmosis, delivered such a strong impression of visual personality alongside fun and likable characters that it might give off the visage of not having a lot of meaningful things to say or criticize, that it is an idolization of the past that doesn't offer meaningful commentary on that said era, or even now in modernity. That it's just nostalgia for the sake of nostalgia. Of course, this assumption would be bullshit, being as I have already talked about this show for 90 plus minutes on this channel, and counting. Stranger Things has a lot of commentary and criticism in regards to the 80s, as well as having relevant themes, most importantly regarding mental health. And this is especially true when discussing Stranger Things 4, which is today's topic, mostly because in Stranger Things 4, we see a lot of the uglier aspects of being obsessed with the past. For one thing, Stranger Things 4 showcases that the 80s wasn't all hunky-dory or the perfect time to be alive, which no fucking shit. In fact, the show portrays a society that wasn't all that accepting of queer identity, there was a toxic political environment, the mentally ill weren't treated with all that much compassion, though to be fair, we the mentally ill still aren't treated all that well, but baby steps I guess, and there were moral panics surrounding Dungeons and Dragons and heavy metal, because of course metalheads like myself are just so dangerous to our society. We are so damn scary, even though we are as much of a threat as a giant teddy bear stuffed with cotton candy, but I digress. The point here is that with Stranger Things 4, the show delved into the less savory aspects of its setting. It went beyond being a mere injection of nostalgia. Furthermore, Stranger Things 4's nostalgic inclinations helps the show leave an emotional impact on the viewer. See, the clear embracement of 80s memorabilia and iconography are what originally draws the viewer into Stranger Things as a series and its world, while well, other than Millie Bobby Brown intensely staring a hole into the depths of my dark soul, because MBB sees all. Yet the nostalgia, as well as Eleven's death glare, ultimately are not why the audience has stuck with the show over the years. If anything, there is more to Stranger Things' is, is, is appeal than just that. While sure, the series penchant for its callbacks to various products, fashions, and that era storytelling and genre tropes have a certain charm in and of themselves, Stranger Things' is most important narrative and thematic feature is that it established an emotional connection with the audience, which was something that was abundantly clear with season 4. A season that scored a direct hit on audiences as if it were James Cameron playing Battleship. Because James Cameron loves water in sinking boats. It's a strange fetish, but I will allow it. But to get back on topic before my ADHD derails this video even further, Stranger Things 4 has an engaging narrative that allows the show to work beyond being a mere vehicle for nostalgia. The science fiction action horror aesthetic is pretty awesome, its roster of young characters are incredibly likable, especially in regards to how those kids have foul mouths and a cavalier attitude towards flipping people the bird. 
because these kids are after my own heart. And most importantly, Stranger Things 4 has a strong thematic core surrounding mental health and PTSD that many audience members can connect with regardless of age or demographic. It has a resonant narrative that many can attach themselves onto. It is downright relatable. This impactful story ironically befits Stranger Things 4's more nostalgic qualities. While Stranger Things 4, like all seasons of Stranger Things, indulges in nostalgia in the same way that a Sonic the Hedgehog co-creator indulges in insider trading, that said nostalgia is the series' foundational piece rather than the main attraction. It is the baseline that an enthralling narrative grows from. Because truly, the most important aspect of Stranger Things 4 is that it forms an emotional connection with the audience, which oddly enough is something that complements the phenomena of nostalgia itself. See, nostalgia is something that an adult experiences when an item, movie, game, or product reminds that aforementioned adult of an earlier and more innocent time of their lives, an era of their existence that they romanticize and even get wistful over. In fact, these recollections are often associated with happier memories, and many companies, especially movie studios these days, are more than aware of this. In fact, many media companies try to game nostalgia for their own ends by creating movies or TV shows that are sequels, prequels, reboots, or remakes of pre-existing nostalgic IPs, or have stories set in a past setting that is now trendy. Because seeing as we associate certain older movies or TV shows with happier nostalgic memories, we, the older audience, would then be more likely to spend money on products that help mentally rejigger these happier experiences. Because truly, monetizing happiness is capitalism's endgame. But there is a problem here. See, a lot of the sequels, prequels, reboots, and remakes of legacy nostalgic properties that media companies churn out are all too often vapid and lifeless. While sure, there have been a few great legacy sequels over the last few years, like say Blade Runner 2049, Mad Max Fury Road, and Doctor Sleep, there have been more blunders than successes, see the recent critical receptions to Hocus Pocus 2, Disenchanted, and basically most horror movies that are either legacy sequels or remakes these days, like say the recent Halloween trilogy. And with that, all these efforts from Hollywood media companies are just missing a key ingredient, because in their effort to Frankenstein nostalgia, a lot of movies are missing that all too important emotional connection, which is a critical failure that misunderstands the point of nostalgia. After all, nostalgia itself doesn't spawn from old toys, video games, music, movies, and such alone. Instead, it comes from a deep personal relationship that the viewer and or customer associates with those said items, because the happy memories that we associate with nostalgia have to come from somewhere after all. There has to be an emotional connection, which is something that Stranger Things 4 has. See, unlike so many of its contemporaries, Stranger Things 4 actually works like gangbusters, or like James Cameron's box office success, because making obscene amounts of money is another weird fetish of Cameron's. But we'll allow it all the same. We don't kink shame on this channel. Sure, Stranger Things 4 is positively drenched with nostalgic throwbacks, but it is the human element that absolutely sells it. It's a show that establishes a rapport with the audience. And we can see this in action due to the intense fanfare that Gen Z has for Stranger Things and Stranger Things 4. Most because, unlike older generations, the older products and such represented on screen in Stranger Things have no nostalgic value to teenagers and or young adults who weren't born before the year 2000. Because obviously, the Gen Z audience has little to no pre-existing relationship with a time period that Generation X and older millennials get nostalgic about. Like, let's be honest here, Gen Z has no experience with a Walkman. Hell, they probably don't even have experience with a goddamn iPod. They have little to no prior emotional or historical association with the products, fashion choices, or other nostalgic attributes featured in the show. Meaning that Stranger Things' 80s setting is merely a stylistic garnish, because what truly draws younger audiences into the show is the story and the characters. If anything, if the show had half the character and half the narrative impact, Gen Z wouldn't be so obsessed with this show. In fact, they wouldn't be watching Stranger Things in the numbers that they do, and they definitely wouldn't be the reason that Kate Bush is running up that hill and Metallica's Master of Puppets became top streaming hits decades after they originally released, as well as the more recent song Mary on a Cross by Ghost, which was merely featured in a viral fan-made Stranger Things TikTok video that even caused the song to chart on Billboard. Because now, oddly enough, we can associate Stranger Things with Ghost. Though, of course, quick aside, I will always support any effort to make Ghost go viral, because of course, I'm a big fan of the tongue-in-cheek Satan band. I mean, how could I not? It has the anti-pope. And regardless whether or not a given song was in a show or on TikTok, Gen Z now have an emotional connection with these songs and 
and other nostalgic throwbacks due to the show, which is something that doesn't happen in a vacuum. That sort of thing only occurs when a creative team puts in the work to create something that ultimately forms a deep bond with the audience, something like Stranger Things 4. Because ultimately, Stranger Things 4 is stylized like an 80s throwback, but underneath the surface, the narrative has a lot of layer and meaning. There's more to the show than just references to past products and fashion trends. It instead establishes an emotional connection with the viewer, which is unironically the perfect embodiment of nostalgia. And with that, that was the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like rating, share, subscribe, ring the bell, and leave a comment telling me what you think of Stranger Things 4 and this essay. Also, please consider checking out my Patreon page. $1 a month gets you onto this credit sequence, and $5 a month allows you to make quick review requests. The link to my Patreon is in the description. And speaking of Patreon, I just want to thank my patrons, particularly my high tier ones in Samantha Devlin, Mom, and Morgan. Thank you so much for supporting what I do. Love y'all.